Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve Google's most asked question of 2021, at least according to leak code. And actually, I think this question is tied for this uh, for the most asked question. There's two questions that are asked very frequently, and this one is pretty much the most frequently asked one of 2020. And this is maximum points you can obtain from cards. And I actually feel surprisingly, this is actually a pretty fair question. Definitely a little bit easier than what you would expect from an actual Google interview. So there are several cards arranged in a row and each card has an associated number of points with it. So basically we're given an array of integers where each integer represents a card's points. Each card is always gonna have a positive value for points. And basically, we have to choose exactly K cards from this list of cards. But the only trick is we can either take, we can only choose, so for example, let's say this is our input array. We have to choose cards from the end. So we have to choose from the left end or the right end. So we're, let's say in this example, we want three cards. We could either choose all three cards from the left, none from the right, or we could choose two cards from the left, one from the right, or we could choose one card from the left and two from the right, or we could choose no cards from the left and three from the right. So those are all the ways that we could possibly do it, right? Because we have to choose exactly K cards every time. We want to choose cards such that it maximizes the output, it maximizes the sum of the points, and then we want to return that sum. So at first glance, this problem is actually pretty straightforward, but let's think of the brute force way to do it. So how many different possible ways could we choose cards, right? Basically, if we choose X number of cards from the left, right? For example, one is X, then how many cards can we choose from the right? Well, basically K minus X, in this case, three minus X is gonna be two. So then we could choose two from here, right? And basically we could choose for X, right? For, for X, which is how many cards we can choose from, let's say the left, we can either choose zero cards, we can choose one card, two cards or three cards for each of those uh, types of ways. We could choose some cards from the right, right? There's gonna be exactly, there's gonna be a corresponding value that we can calculate, which is how many cards we'll take from the right. So how many different ways can we choose cards? Approximately K plus one, or let's just call it K. And for each way that we're choosing, let's say two from the left, one from the right, how many total cards are there gonna be? Of course, that's always gonna be K, right? K is the number of cards we're allowed to choose. So if we were doing this in a brute force way, basically the time complexity would be big O of K squared, but we know that there might be a more efficient way to do this. And it turns out there is, it's basically very similar to a sliding window technique. So for example, let's say our first sliding window was this, that tells us basically, so we want to arrange our sliding window basically where everything outside of the sliding window, in this case, we have three elements over here. Everything outside of the sliding window is going to be the sum, right? So initially, this is the first case. Our sliding window is all the way to the left and we leave exactly K elements on the right side, three elements. We take the sum of these three elements and we get 12, right? So 12 is the largest we can get so far. And now we're going to shift our sliding window until we reach the end of the input. We're going to keep shifting our sliding window by one position each time until we reach the end. So notice how initially we had three values. Now we only have two values to the right. So what we did, we initially had 12 as our sum. Clearly we added this value to our window now, right? So now we cannot include this in our sum. So what we're gonna take with our sum is subtract it by five, but we removed this element from our window, right? So we want to take all elements that are outside of our window, this one element and these two elements and use it in our total sum. So we subtract five, but we can add one. This is gonna give us a positive eight. So this is definitely not the max before we had a 12. This is less than that. So we're not gonna update our result. But we are gonna keep track of this is our current sum because now when we shift our window by one more position, now we're at the case where we're choosing one element from the right and two elements from the left. 
So what did we do? Well, we introduced this element to our sum, right? So we're going to do a plus two, but notice how this six has been added to our window now. So therefore it's going to be removed from the sum. So what we're now going to say is, okay, eight minus six plus this two, which is going to leave us with a sum of four. And that makes sense, right? Because take a look at all elements outside of the window. One plus two plus one, that's obviously four. So we're on the right track here. And so of course, four is not the max so far, but we are going to maintain that four because four is the total sum. And now we're going to shift our window one more position into the last position, right? Now our window is here. So basically we've gotten to the case where we're choosing three elements from the beginning. So what we did is we took this element and added it to our window. So we're subtracting it from the sum, but this element is now no longer a part of the window. So this element can actually be added to our sum. So for minus one, plus three is going to give us a positive six. Six is not the maximum, right? So basically we've done every possible way that we could have shifted our window, right? This is where our window is now. If we shift our window one more time, we'll end up like this, right? This is obviously invalid and we know that's the case because look, now we have four elements outside of our window, but we always wanted there to be three elements outside of the window because we're always going to be totaling up three elements exactly. So now we can basically stop. So we'll return 12 as the result. That was the largest sum that we were able to get. And we were actually able to do this in big O of K time because we initially started our window over here, right? So we, we first computed this sum, which was size K. So that was an O of K operation. And then each time we shifted our window, you can see that we shifted it one time, two times, three times until our window was in this position. So again, we did a K operation. So K plus K is going to be the overall time complexity. That's obviously going to be big O of K as well. So that's the overall time complexity. We didn't need any extra memory. So the memory complexity is big O of one. Now let's get into the code and we're basically going to be following exactly what I did in the drawing explanation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize the left and right pointer. The left is of course gonna be all the way to the left. The right pointer is gonna be the length of our input array card points minus K. And remember the first thing we wanted to do was get the sum of the last K elements. How can we do that? Well, we can just take the sum of the card points array from the index right, because that right index is literally just the length minus K. So we want the last K elements. So we can start at index right, go all the way to the end of the card points array and take that sum. And that can be our initial total sum so far. Now I said that this is O of one memory, but technically I think Python creates a temporary array when you do this sub when you do this like sub listing, but we're just going to kind of ignore that because obviously I could do the exact same thing with just a for loop if I really wanted to. And I don't think an interviewer would be too nitpicky about that. So the next thing we're going to do is initialize our result to whatever this total happens to be. This is our, this is our initial result. And we're going to look for a result that's even greater than this one, if it exists. So now is the portion where we're going to be sliding our window. So we're going to keep doing that until right is out of bounds. So while our right pointer is in bounds, we're going to keep incrementing it. But before we increment it, we want to potentially update the total, right? So what we want to do to the total is add to the total whatever the left value is in our card points array, right? Because we're always adding the left value and subtracting the right value because the right value is, you know, that's just kind of how we did it in the drawing picture. And that's what makes sense. So this is kind of the computation we're going to do. We're going to update our total by adding the value on the left index and removing the value on the right index, updating our total. And potentially if this total is greater than the result, we'll end up updating our result variable as well. And of course, once we're done with that, we need to actually perform the slide operation for our window. So I'm just gonna increment the left pointer and increment the right pointer. And of course, we're going to keep doing that until we get out of bounds, in which case, you know, this, this loop is going to run about K times, I think K plus one exactly, something like that. And once we're done, we know we'll have uh, computed whatever the maximum result was, and we can go ahead and return it. And as you can see, this solution is very efficient. It's definitely surprisingly easy for what you would expect from a Google coding interview, but I'm sure the interviewer would have some additional follow-ups for this question and maybe 
the interviewer is looking for how well can you explain the idea and maybe how clean your code could be. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.